Hello, welcome to Geography Nut. If you are new to our channel, we are all about exploring this world. We started our journey in Canada, completed all the continental North American countries and finally reached the Caribbean region. Today we are going to explore Cuba, the first Caribbean country for us. So I am very excited. When you think about Cuba, what comes to your mind? For me, it's the wild spring parties, cigar, Cuban sandwich, beautiful white sandy beaches, rum, Guantanamo Bay, and Federal Castro. But the island is much more than that. Let's spin the globe and find Cuba first. Cuba lies west of the North Atlantic Ocean, east of the Gulf of Mexico, and south of Florida. Cuba is the largest island in the Caribbean region and eighth largest island country in the world. It is subdivided into 15 provinces and one special municipality. Capital and the largest city is Havana. Cuba's flag is called Lone Star Flag. It consists of five alternating stripes, three blue and two white. The three blue stripes represent Cuba's three department at the time the flag was created. The white stand for purity of Cuban ideas and light. The red equilateral triangle at the hoist site represent the three ideas, liberty, equality, and fraternity. The one white five-pointed star at the center of the triangle represent absolute freedom among people of Cuba. This is Cuba's coat of arms. The shield is divided into three sections. The top part, a golden key between the two capes and a racing sun over the sea depict the position of Cuba in the gulf between the Florida and the Mexico's Yucatan Peninsula. On the right, Cuban country scene dominated by the royal palm tree, a symbol of unbreakable character of the Cuban people. On the left, the blue and white stripe is from the flag shown diagonally. The shield is flanked by the branch of laurel and the branch of home oak, representing the strength and honor of the people. The coat of arms is supported by a bunch of sticks tied with the red rope forming a cross, symbolizing the union of all Cuban. The crown of the coat is covered by the Phrygian cap, symbolizing liberty. I hope you are enjoying. Let's move on to Cuba is not just one island, it is a one main island and 400 other small islands and caves located in the Northern Caribbean Sea at the confluence of Gulf of Mexico and the Atlantic Ocean. So let's look at the neighbors. United States is about 150 kilometers away, Mexico is 210, Haiti is 77 kilometers and Jamaica Cayman Island both about 140 kilometers away and Bahamas is 200 kilometers away. The 4,000 islands that are part of Cuba surround the main island Cuba in four archipelagos. The Colorados, the Sabana Camave, the Jardina de la Reina, and the Canarenos. This is where you will find the second largest island of Cuba, Isla de Wandur. These names are really hard for me to enunciate. I'm trying my best, but I don't think I'm doing a good job. The island of Cuba is the largest island in the Caribbean and the 17th largest island in the world by area. The terrain of the main island is mostly flat with rolling plains and four major mountain ranges. Sierra Maestra and Sierra Crystal dominate the southern part of the island. Escambre Mountain break up the central plain and Sierra del Rosario run the middle of the northeastern part of the island. White sandy beaches, mangroves and marshes dot the coastal plain. The highest point of Cuba is Pico Turquino. This is part of the Sierra Maestra mountain range. Cuba doesn't have much lakes or river. The largest natural water lake is Laguna de la Chie. However, the largest man-made lake is Sasa Reservoir. Rio Cato is the longest river not only in Cuba but also in the whole Caribbean region. The beaches, mangroves and the wetland create a border between the sea and the land. These ecosystems are inhabited by 
great variety of animals. Cuba is home to over 25 endemic bird species, including the bee hummingbird, which is the smallest bird in the world. One of the smallest frog also call this area home. Cuba's climate is tropical with dry and relatively cool from late November to April and rainy and muggy from May to October. Average temperature is about 21 degree in the cooler months and 27 degree in the warmer months. The warm waters of the Caribbean Sea and the location of Cuba make Cuba target for frequent hurricanes, mostly between September and October. So how are we doing so far? Are you learning something new? Before we go further, I need to ask you a favor. Please, could you like this video and subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. UTF is telling me that 97.8% of you are not subscribed. So, could you please? Okay, thank you. Let's go to History! Kiba was first settled by human about 5,000 years ago. We don't know much about the first civilization. Guana Quatebe civilization and Taino people were living in the island when Christopher Columbus arrived in the island. And he climbed it for Spain and named the island Isla Juana. Diego Balascas de Cuya established the first Spanish settlement in Baracoa. The indigenous Taino people were forced to work in the encomienda system. Within a century, the indigenous population were virtually wiped out, mainly due to infectious diseases brought in from Europe. Spanish developed diversified farming industry, including sugarcane, tobacco, and cattle. As the farming industry grew, slaves were brought in to work in the plantations. British captured Havana during the Seven Year War. At the end of the war, Spain agreed to exchange Florida for Havana. It is interesting to note that this deal wasn't popular among British. Lot of British thought that Havana is much valuable than Florida. Industrial revolution began and the sugar industry was heavily industrialized. By 1860, Cuba supplied one third of the world sugar. Cuban fight for independence led by the poet Jose Marti began. The war for independence again got heated. U.S. got involved and Spanish-American war started. U.S. battleship, the USS Maine, was sank. At the end of the war, Treaty of Paris was signed and U.S. gained control of Cuba. Cuba gained independence from USA in 1902 after signing Platt Amendment and U.S. leased the Guantanamo Bay naval base from Cuba. Pretty much U.S. forced Cuba to sign an agreement to get an independence. With the independence, Thomas Estrada Palma became the first president. Few decades after the independence, Cuban economy went down significantly and corruption increased. Relationship with the USA is deteriorated. Procencio Bastida took control of the country and made himself a dictator. Third of the Cuban war in poverty, sugar industry was stagnant and mafia took control of Havana. Rebel leader Fidel Castro organized a revolution to overthrow Bastida and he succeeded in 1959 and gained control of the country. Castro declared Cuba a socialist country and nationalized all the private industry, including the oil industry. This angered US. US imposed an economic embargo on Cuba, but Castro allied Cuba with Soviet Union. Cuba became a major player in Cold War between United States and Soviet Union. First, United States unsuccessfully tried to overthrow Castro through Bay of Pigs invasion. Then Soviet Union tried to establish a nuclear missile base in Cuba, which caused a Cuban Missile Crisis. Everyone thought the World War III started. Somehow, United States and Soviet Union agreed not to do it. Fidel Castro remained in power for 50 years and then in 2008 handed over the government to his younger brother, Raul Castro. Cubans are at a very pivotal point. Fidel Castro's younger brother Raul Castro just announced his retirement. 
So after 62 years of Castro brothers' administration, the country is facing a new change. And I don't think that change is going to be immediate or bold, but definitely the younger Cubans have working very hard for change. I'm hoping that Cuba will catch up to the rest of the world sooner rather than later. People and culture. Cuba is a multi-ethnic country, home to different ethnicity, religions, and backgrounds. As a result, Cubans generally pay allegiance to the country rather than their ethnicity. Cuban culture is largely an amalgamation of African and Spanish cultures. Cuba's population is around 11.2 million. Intermarriages between different races is very common, which is a good thing, but make it a little bit harder to report on racial composition. However, 64% of the population is classified as white, 25% mulatto, 10% black, and 1% Chinese. As a result of importation of Chinese labor when the slavery ended, it is also difficult to report religious composition as different surveys have different results. Pew Forum estimate about 59% of Cubans are Christians, 23% of them are unaffiliated, meaning they don't follow a particular religion, 17% of them follow indigenous religion, and the final 1% mainly consists of Jews and Muslims. Spanish is the official language. Nearly all Cubans speak Spanish exclusively, but they have their own dialect. School education is mandatory for children aged from 6 to 15. Cuba's literacy rate is 99.8%, which is the 10th highest globally. Cuba's high school graduation rate is also 94%. That's pretty high. Education has a strong political and ideological emphasis, and students progressing to higher education are expected to have a commitment to Cuba's goals. Cuban music is lively. Its exciting, pulsating rhyme makes you want to dance. Baseball has a special place in Cuban's heart. American sailors brought this game to Cuba in the 1800, and Fidel Castro's love of the game has solidified this game in Cuba. However, Raul Castro's government made it possible for Cuban to leave the country, so many players left to play for United States. After many of them left, the popularity of the game shrunk. Soccer has stepped in to fill the gap, but best players are leaving Cuba to play in United States or other countries. Boxing has also become increasingly popular. Cuba's development has been hindered because of its history as a communist country. Modern conveniences such as Wi-Fi is never available, but it's not widespread. It is still difficult to find access to things in store due to ongoing trade embargoes. These embargoes affect Cubans' everyday life. Cuban cuisine is satisfying but bland. Cubans drive repaired classic cars because they don't have access to what most of the Western world take for granted. Even with all the difficulties that they face, Cubans are some of the friendliest and most honest people. They will talk to anyone and everyone and generous with their time. Cuban economy is a planned economy. Governments own and operate most of the businesses and services. And most Cuban work for the government. After the Soviet Union collapse, government is opening up a little bit and tiny bit encouraging private businesses and cooperatives and self-employment. However, only in 2019, private property and free market rights were guaranteed by the constitution. Foreign investment has been increasing in the past decade. Investment is still restricted and require government approval. Government sets most prices and rations goods. United States embargo against Cuba prevent American companies to invest in or trade with Cuba. It is the longest trade embargo in the modern history. However, Cuba conduct international trade with many countries, including many of US allies. Main trading partners are Venezuela, Spain, 
Russia, Lebanon, Indonesia, Germany, China, Brazil, Mexico, and Italy. Cuba's $100 billion economy is fueled by petroleum, nickel, cobalt, pharmaceuticals, tobacco, construction, steel, cement, and tourism. About 3 million tourists visit Cuba every year. Most of them are from United States. Cuba's currency is peso. Housing and transportation costs are low. Cuban receives government subsidized education, health care, and food subsidies. Most Cubans make about 17 to 30 US dollars per month, which is way below the poverty line, even with the government subsidies. There is a lot happening in Cuba. Let's see the next 20 to 30 years is going to be very interesting. This is it for Cuba. I hope you enjoyed this video and learned something new. If you did, please subscribe to my channel. Next time I'm going to do is Jamaica. And don't forget to smash the like button. Every time you smash the like button, YouTube is going to show it to more and more people. I like more people to know my channel. Thank you.